This is Kaylee Copeland with Equine Information Source, and today we are here with Katherine Wilson. For 26 years, Katherine Wilson has practiced equine law, construction law, commercial litigation, and employment law. She was a founding partner of Wilson Lewis LLP before moving in 2014 to Goldman Sloan Nash & Haber LLP. Katherine is an industry member of the Ontario Equestrian Federation and holds a position as Honorary Governor of the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair. She is Chair of the Risk Management Committee and a former member of the Finance Committee of the Royal. Catherine publishes extensively in Horse Sport Magazine on issues of equine law. She gives conferences across Canada on equine law for Equine Canada, the Ontario Equestrian Federation, the American Association for Justice, the Jockey Club of Canada, and more. Catherine works with clients from many various sectors of the equine industry. She advises on contracts, syndicates, litigation, disputes, and tax issues related to horses. Thank you for being here with us today, Catherine. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. What can barn owners do to protect themselves legally against anyone contracting the virus in their facility? First thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have safety protocols in place. What safety protocols should you do? I would suggest you check with uh, Equine Ontario, you check with uh, Equine Canada, you, you check with provincial government websites, you could check your municipal government websites. COVID protocols are out there today, uh, Chambers of Commerce, providing them to businesses. Um, a barn is a unique workplace, so you will probably have to modify some of these protocols to work in your workplace. And remember, a barn is a workplace. So today we know that inside you should be wearing masks. We know that there's hand washing. You should provide sanitizers or sanitizing stations, whether it's soap and water or one of those squeegee bottles. They don't care. It's just something to clean your hands that works. Uh, two meters distance, that's an, another protocol. If, if we're going to talk about guests, here's, here's an idea. People that are coming into your barn, should they be filling out every time they enter your barn? A paper that says, have you been in contact with anybody with COVID symptoms in the last two weeks? Have you come from a foreign country or been on a plane in the last two weeks? Have you been feeling ill in the last two weeks? I'm sure many of you entering certain places have been asked to fill out a form like that and sign it. So that's one thing you can do with people coming in. We're having your rules posted and reminding your guests that these are the rules that are in force for COVID safety protocols in your stable. So that's all for the guests, okay? And then you're educating your staff on the rules for guests and making sure that your staff politely enforce those rules. I often advise stable operators and owners to have waivers that they get their boarders and their you know, guests that come on to ride horses to sign. And these waivers are for personal injury and death or loss of property if they fall off a horse, get kicked by a horse, all the usual things that can happen in a barn. You can also have them sign a waiver that deals with COVID-19. And, and places of business are doing that now. And some sporting, uh, sporting organizations are doing that. So if you're going to go in, you're going to bring your boarders back and they're going to be in close proximity with each other, you can have a special COVID-19 waiver where they understand that coming into the barn and doing their no normal activities may expose them to the COVID-19 virus and they could get ill or die, get ill or die. And that even though you are taking COVID-19 safety measures, there is that risk. Is that release enforceable for COVID-19? We don't know, it's brand new but waivers are enforceable for other things. So warriors are saying, why not? Again, it has to be introduced like you would put any other waiver, which means they have to have time to read it. It has to be in clear language that they can understand. The important things like, I am releasing you from all claims for injury or death should be highlighted on the document, you know, not buried in the middle like it's a you know rental agreement for a car, but highlighted on the document 
There are rules all around the signing of waivers. The same rules apply to COVID-19 groups. Thank you again for taking the time to do this interview with us, Catherine. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Catherine is currently writing a book on legal issues related to the horse industry that will be published in the near future, so keep an eye out for her name on the shelves. If you are in need of legal counsel, contact Catherine Wilson at Goldman, Sloan, Nash & Haber, LLP. Mm -hmm.